Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are talking about the Association of Professional Piercers, otherwise known as the APP. And if you are interested in body piercings or have piercings or literally know anything about body piercings, you've probably heard about the APP. Usually with people saying, oh, make sure you find an APP piercer, make sure you go to someone who's a member of the APP. But what is the Association of Professional Piercers? A lot of folks who are not in the industry don't really have a great idea about that. So let's talk about it. The Association of Professional Piercers is a voluntary health and safety organization for the body piercing industry. And so what they do is they're a nonprofit and they give out and share good information about health and safety for body piercing to piercers, health inspectors, medical professionals, and clients. Now, this is a voluntary organization. No piercer is required to join it. It's not mandatory to join it. It's not the law to join it. Um, you opt to join it. You opt to be a member. Uh, and you do so because it gives you access to lots of awesome educational information about health and safety. And it also shows how seriously you take being a safe body piercer. So what does being a member of the Association of Professional Piercers mean? Well, it means that we meet membership standards and criteria, the biggest being environmental criteria. The Association of Professional Piercers looks at how we've set up our studio, make sure that we're using proper sterilization, that we're using proper cleaning, that we're using proper skin prep. They make sure that our room is laid out in a way that's safe and healthy for body piercing, that we actually have an enclosed space for piercing, that we don't have curtains or we're not just in the middle of a studio doing it. They make sure things like we're not cleaning dirty tools or unsafe instruments in the bathroom where you go to the bathroom and wash your hands when you're in a studio. They make sure that only body piercing is happening in a body piercing room, that there's not hair cutting or professional makeup or other services with chemicals or waste products that could contaminate the space. So one of the biggest things about membership is having a studio that's set up to provide safe body piercing. Another big criteria of membership is jewelry and jewelry quality. So the APP has us show and prove that we're ordering and using quality jewelry that meets their minimum standards for safe install at a body piercing. Things like implant grade titanium, implant grade steel, low porosity glass, niobium, materials that we know are medically and scientifically proven to be safe to put in the body long term. The APP also has a code of conduct. So when we become members, we agree to things like treating clients equally and fairly, treating staff and coworkers equally and fairly, not discriminating against people due to age, race, gender, sex, sexual orientation, ability, you name it, it's covered in there. Um, it also just says that we're gonna uphold the professionalism and the meaning and message behind the APP. Now, as far as what the APP does, regular members pretty much just join their members. That's it. You update your membership information every two years. There you go. But this is a voluntary nonprofit organization. So folks volunteer for a number of different committees that do really amazing things for the piercing industry all over the world. Some things those committees do are the legislative committee helps with piercing legislation and laws nationally and internationally. So let's say legislation was being introduced in your state that was potentially harmful to the piercing industry or didn't have accurate information or could be better. The legislative Legislative committee volunteers their time to work with lawmakers and policymakers to design laws and work on legislation that makes body piercing safer. They also work internationally with different countries and all over the world trying to get better, safer regulations for piercing put in place. One of the biggest things that the APP does is host a yearly conference for body piercers that is held in Vegas and it's an educational event. It is not open to the public. You're not going to like go there and get pierced. Um, piercers are attending and we're taking classes and we're learning new things about body piercing, cutting edge information about materials, sterilization, anatomy, uh, and you get to learn and grow as a body piercer. And it really is such an amazing, amazing event. And I encourage any piercer to attend no matter how long you've been doing this for, no matter how much experience you have. I promise you, you will learn something new at conference that you didn't know before that can make you a better piercer and a safer piercer for your clients. 
And one of the most useful things the APP does for clients like you at home is it has a member locator on their site. Um, and so anyone who's a member, which means they meet environmental standards, their studio is set up in a safe and clean and healthy way. They meet jewelry standards. So they're using quality, safe jewelry, that, jewelry that you can trust. There's a member locator on their site and you can go, you can enter in your zip code and you can see who in your area is a member of the Association of Professional Piercers. And this is an international member locator. So it's not just for America. You can find APP members all over the world with this and it's such a great resource for clients because it allows you to go on and know right away okay here's who I know beyond a shadow of a doubt in my area is using good jewelry is set up to be clean and safe and probably cares a lot more about body piercing health and safety than a lot of these other studios do because they're opting to be members of the APP and hold themselves to these higher standards. Now, one thing you will notice I did not mention the APP does is anything to do with skill. Now, this is a health and safety organization. That is all that they do. They, they share information about body piercing, about safe body piercing um, with piercers and health inspectors and things like that. The APP has nothing to do with skill, which means you can be an APP member and you can use the right jewelry and your studio can be set up beautifully and you can still do crooked, unsafe, incorrect piercings all day long, and you are still a member. Because the APP doesn't certify skill. So anyone of any skill level, as long as they're meeting those minimum health and safety criteria, can become a member. Now you may hear this and say, well, Lynn, that seems stupid. Why don't they do that? Uh, and there's two really big main reasons. One, it's a nonprofit organization, and were it to start like requiring skill-based certifications, that would change a lot of the legalities around the, the organization and doing that sort of stuff and changing those laws for nonprofits is incredibly difficult. The other thing is streamlining the industry and defining exactly how a correct helix or a correct septum piercing is done and stating unequivocally, this is the way that you do it safe and right is much more challenging than it seems, especially when we're talking about an international organization. And a big part of this is that not everywhere has equal accessibility to these things and to safe piercing and to safe standards. Here in America, we're very fortunate to have very easy accessibility to safe body jewelry, to safe tools, to safe techniques. But for example, in the UK and in Australia, it can be incredibly hard to get quality safe needles. There's just not good distribution and good manufacturers producing over there. So streamlining those requirements for the entire world for the piercing industry would be very, very very difficult. Another thing to remember is that this is a voluntary organization, which means people volunteer to be a part of committees, to be on the board and do this work. They're not getting paid. They're not making money for this. And already membership applications to the APP can sometimes take months to be processed and accepted because there's literally hundreds and hundreds of applications to go through. And there's a small committee of, I think about 10 to 14 people who go through all of these applications and make sure that, you know, everything is up to standard. If we were to add skill certification into that, we would need like literally hundreds of people doing nothing all day but pouring over the certifications and the tests to make sure people are at skill level. And that's not how it goes. The people who are on these committees, they're also body piercers. They work a full-time job piercing five days a week and then in their free time because they feel passionate about health and safety in this industry, they volunteer their time on these committees to do this stuff. So they're simply not the manpower and the structure in the organization to certify skill even if all of piercing could agree on a set of skill certifications, um, which would not happen. Uh, piercers are like herding cats. Anytime the APB has to vote on anything, it's bless those on the board. Bless those on the board. That is all I have to say about that. Because the APP doesn't certify skill, that definitely means that there are piercers who are members who are bad piercers. And I want to mention that because I think a lot of clients get in this mentality or this mindset of, oh, it's an APP piercer. That automatically means they're safe, they're amazing, they're great, I can trust them with anything. 
uh, and that's not the case. I see a lot of bad work come from APP members and a lot of unsafe and incorrect piercings. And the clients are always like, but I did everything right. I saw an APP member. Um, that unfortunately is not enough. Even if you're seeing an APP member, that's great because it means that they're meeting minimum standards for health and safety and jewelry, but it doesn't mean that they're an ethical, safe, or educated body piercer. So if you are a client and you're seeking out a piercer, even if they're an APP member, you should still check their portfolio. You should still ask good questions. You should still go in and kind of get a feel for the studio, see how it's set up, see how they work, see how they do things, look at the way they talk to you and treat you and make your decision if they're a piercer that you want to trust to do your piercings. But just being an APP member is not the end all be all of being a good body piercer. Likewise, there are plenty of really fantastic and amazing piercers who are not members of the APP. So just because someone does not have APP membership does not mean that they are inherently a bad piercer. There are literally hundreds of piercers who I know who I'm friends with who are fantastic, amazing piercers, use great jewelry, their studio is set up beautifully, they do ethical, safe, educated piercing, uh, and they just opt not to be members of the Association of Professional Piercers, which is totally fine and valid. So just because a piercer you're seeing is not a member, doesn't inherently mean that they're not a safe piercer, but membership is a good baseline to start off with as a client to help figure out who you want to see and who's safe. And honestly, the majority of quality safe piercers, I would say, are members. Now, on all of my social media and here on my channel, I do speak very openly about abuse and mistreatment in the industry because it is a rampant issue. Uh, and I can't really talk about the APP without talking about that. They are a nonprofit health and safety organization, and that is all that they are. And as a young piercer, I didn't really realize this. So when I ended up in situations of abuse and mistreatment and violence, I turned to the APP and really hoped that they would be able to help me. Uh, and they did not. And they are a health and safety organization. Their focus, their primary goal, the thing that they do is spread information about safe body piercing. They are not the piercing police. They are not the earring government. Uh, they cannot do as much about abuse and violence and mistreatment in the industry as a lot of people think they can as, and as a lot of us would like them to. And I know there will be some piercers at home who do not like me talking about this publicly online on YouTube like this, um, but I think it's important because when I was a young piercer, I really thought the APP was capable of doing more than it was, was able to help in bigger ways than it could, uh, and it wasn't. And it was it was really hard for me to come to terms with that and realize that they would not be able to help me after all of my abuse and after everything that I dealt with. In fact, the organization was not designed to. The organization actually has a long history of protecting abusers, like many organizations do across many industries. Now, the good news is as abuse becomes a more rampant issue and a more public issue, and as the Me Too movement has taken over all sorts of industries from piercing and tattooing to movement movies, to music, to film, to pretty much everything, changes are happening and changes are being made. There are new members sitting on the board of the Association of Professional Piercers who are working on policies that can allow the association to do more in instances of abuse and violence to protect piercers and apprentices and front of house from these situations. Now these changes are just beginning. They haven't been implemented yet. So there's still a lot of work that can be done. But changes are being made in a positive direction, and that makes me really, really, really happy. As a client, the Association of Professional Piercers is an amazing baseline to make sure that you are finding a piercer that you know is using good quality jewelry, has a really well set up studio, and cares enough about health and safety and education to be a member and to meet those minimum standards. And if you're looking for a good piercer or looking to find a good piercer, a great baseline is to find an APP member because you know at a bare minimum they at least care enough to be members and they at least care enough to use the right stuff. That being said, being a member is not the end all be all of what makes a good piercer and you should still ask good questions, still check portfolios and still feel out the piercer and the studio and make sure that they're the right fit for you and someone that you wanna trust.
As piercers, the Association of Professional Piercers is literally the absolute best educational resource you can have in order to become the strongest, best, safest piercer that you can be. And I would encourage everyone to join the Association of Professional Piercers, to learn, to attend conference, to take their seminars and classes online, and to work to meet their minimum standards and exceed their minimum standards because they are doing so much incredibly important work for our industry that is so so necessary and needed. That being said, they are at the end of the day, just a health and safety organization. They are not capable or able or set up to do more than that. So for piercers and for people looking to get into the industry, the APP is a really amazing resource. It's really great, but it is not the end all be all of everything. And it is an organization that has a history fraught with mismanagement and abuse and issues and it's working on growing and becoming better and I think us as piercers and as people in the industry how we can encourage that change is to join and to work on that from the inside but also to have realistic expectations for what they are capable of doing and what is realistic for them to do and to use our voices and our membership to try and encourage the organization to make the changes that we want to see and that we feel are important to us as an industry. So that is my explanation about the Association of Professional Piercers, what the organization is, what it can do, what it can't do, and why it is important for clients and piercers alike. And if you like this and you want to see more content from me, obviously please hit like, please subscribe, uh, and hopefully we sit down and we hang out soon. <laughs> Have a great day.